Ab always heard this phrase. It goes something like, you're only truly rich, not if you have plenty, but if you don't need anything. And I think I got what it said, as in, I understood this concept. This film is the perfect representation of it. Spoilers ahead. Everything about this movie exhumes nostalgia, from the aspect ratio, the cassette tapes, the music, the film cameras. When we first see these elements being introduced, we could think that this guy is just old-fashioned or doesn't care about learning what Spotify or Apple Music is. Perhaps he likes collecting. As the film progresses, we get a glimpse into who this guy really is. He barely talks and lives a very minimalistic lifestyle. I have to say I love how seriously the director took his approach to visual storytelling. There's barely any dialogue here, only when it's explicitly necessary. Gotta love that, honestly. As the title says, the film is a collection of days. We learn his routine and get used to the people he typically interacts with. And what I believe lies the true heart of this film is in how appreciative he is about the little things. He cares about doing his work well, about watering his plants, about fulfilling his routine. And he is happy when little details, such as a kid waving back, or playing tic-tac-toe during a few days are regarded as something truly special. While we get very little context on why he is there, if it was his choice or something else happened, we see that he has a sister and a niece. We see that his sister is well off and their dad is sick. That's about it. What I could gather from the movie is that he has everything he needs, or at least he is content with what he has. We can see that very well when he discovers that his cassette tapes are worth hundreds of dollars and he still decides to keep them. Hirayama is not a greedy individual, quite the opposite. He needs very little to be happy, or at least to find happiness around him. It's nice to see when his routine is broken by silly things that make his life what it is. But we also see that he's not a care bear and has complex emotions. He can feel sad or conflicted and, like many of us, plays some great music to try to take the edge off. In terms of cinematography, I must say it's as beautiful as the title of the movie. I love how they chose a four-thirds aspect ratio. It gives a lot of height to the film and also contributes to the whole nostalgia effect. It's a nice way of communicating who the character is and how he is. He doesn't have a smartphone or a digital camera or a streaming service. Not necessarily because he can't access that, but he's happy with what he has. Those quote-unquote vintage things he has, for him, are not vintage. Just his old stuff that made him happy and still works, and he sees no need to change them. That also tells us that he's a man who appreciates his routine. The wonderful shots of the city that sometimes make the character feel somewhat small but most of the time it just helps blend the character with the city itself. The direction is perfect and so is the timing. The music selection is stellar as well, but I think we can all agree that the best part about this film is Koji Yakusho's performance. I'm sorry if I'm butchering his name. My god was that amazing. I think I'm going to be referencing this performance in the future just because it's a masterclass on how to give an amazing performance. Utterly professional personal and moving, you can feel every emotion through his eyes. It's beautiful. It's one of the few cases when just winning the Best Actor Award at Cannes doesn't feel like enough recognition. I think by now it's fairly obvious that I love this film. I find it brilliant that they took a job such as cleaning toilets, which is seen by society as hitting rock bottom, and turning it into a brilliant piece on how to live life and enjoy what we have while we can. As always, thank you for watching. See you next time.